his Simon Whistler's Viola music has come up for sale on eBay or whatever, and I'm like, I should buy that. I think I did. I think I might have one of those. Did I actually buy that? Some point I have a vague memory of buying one of Simon Whistler's Viola CDs. <laughs> okay, smartass. Let's see what this mystery's all about. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I, as always, am your host, Simon. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome to... Well, Danny's reading me a script. What the f*** is going on at Twitter? <laughs> Mostly because I wanted to know. I was like, what is going on? Why is it such a mess? Where shall I, like, <laughs> I'm on Twitter and it just seems to be like Elon Musk has bought it. He didn't really want to buy it, right? And then he ended up having to buy it or not really. He just didn't want to have to go to court and then them forcing to buy it because that'd be embarrassing. It's a bit like he went to the store, picked up something he couldn't afford, got up to the cashier's desk and they were like, oh, sorry, sir, your card's been declined, but you're gonna have to pay for that somehow because you're broke. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work out a good analogy here on the fly for what Elon Musk did, but it's kind of- It is shit, Austin. He probably regrets it, doesn't he? He's probably got that buyer's remorse. Except, you know, buyer's remorse for me is like, oh, did I really need to buy that little gadgety thing? Or like, I don't know, I've got a bunch of that I'm like, oh, I don't really need that. I kind of regret buying that. Am I going to return it? Mm. No, but life goes on. And like, but the good news is none of those things cost like $45 billion, which is a relief, to be honest because I don't have that, unlike Mr. Musk. Although he also didn't. He had to like get a big loan and stuff. L let's just get into it, shall we? I'm sure this video is bloody long enough already without me rambling. Going purely on the... S oh, if you're new here, what happens is Danny writes me a script. I've never read it before. I'm going to read it. Sam afterwards is going to add in some of the finest vintage memes that you've ever seen, and let's go. Going purely on the strength of recent news headlines, you'll be forgiven for thinking that Twitter has recently had its wings cruelly clipped before getting recklessly pushed from its perch and then sent spiraling into freefall. Apparently, every Twitter user is waving a solemn farewell to the platform and migrating to Mastodon the advertisers have fled, and those last few remaining employees who haven't yet hurled themselves from the rooftops of the burning headquarters in San Francisco. <laughs> Holy shit, daddy. Dark. That's not really what's happening. Elon Musk just seems to have fired everybody. Which, I mean, you read these comments of people... <laughs> I saw an insane one the other day. Someone was like, I don't understand why Twitter needs, like, 700, uh, 7,000 employees or whatever. It's just like a website. I could run a website. And it's like, bro, that's like saying, like, Amazon's just a website. No, th 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 that's just the bit you see. You understand there's other sh going on like behind the scenes right beyond the surface website that you can see it's like looking at an iceberg and being like that's it <laughs> that's it there's nothing below it's just floating on the surface come on use your small brain just a little bit i don't understand i don't understand bitch i don't understand it all sounds a bit grim, yet when I look at Twitter today, it all appears to be reassuringly normal. I'm pleased to see that people are still responding to my tweet about painting a goat that got sent in the wrong colour. What are you talking about, Danny? You got a goat sent in the wrong colour? Or you painted it yourself? What's going on? While Simon is still rated, <laughs> while Simon is still ranting about Alex Jones and YouTube creators and Dropbox. Oh my god, Danny, don't. I'll go on and rant about all these f***ing things. <laughs> YouTube creators is just the endless rant of like, what the f***? My latest one with them is like, anytime I publish a video that's like remotely controversial or to do with like, um, we made one about the Akigahara suicide forest or whatever, and YouTube send you an email and it's like, Don't do it. No. Dear creator, we're here to help. We've noticed that you've published a video about suicide. It's like, it's a factual historical video. <laughs> and they're not banning it or limiting it or anything. They're just like checking in. Except it feels like the mis most dystopian shit in the world because it's literally like, Dear Creator, if you wrote like, Dear Creator, 1498632 uh, that that's the vibe. It's got the full dystopian vibe, YouTube. And then it's like, we're here to help. Except we're not. But here's some numbers you can call. F*** off. If you're not if you're not gonna help, don't send that message and don't even get me f started on those assholes at Dropbox. Or Alex Jones. He's the worst of them all, Alex Jones, that fing prick. Allegedly. Daddy chill. Sure a few people, I mean the courts have decided that he's prick enough to have uh, 1.4 billion dollars. Ah for uh, taken away from him, which he doesn't have because he's he's rich, but he's not that rich. But that that all his money's getting taken away. He's gonna have to like flee to Belize or some shit. <laughs> oh god then he's like it's like uh who's that who's that presenter that america doesn't like and we don't like either what's that guy's name 
I don't, I don't, he doesn't, I don't really know much about him because he just seemed to go to America and then we just didn't want him back in the UK. It's not Rupert Murdoch, but I feel like it maybe presents on one of his channels. Piers Morgan! Piers Morgan! No one wants Piers Morgan! <laughs> but mm, Belize is gonna have to deal with Alex Jones. <laughs> they're not, they're not, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just making shit up. Stop it. What are you doing? Sure, a few people here and there are talking about Elon Musk, but I can see more stuff in my own feed about how Elizabeth Holmes from Theranos has just been jailed for failing to deliver a working bread maker. Danny, are you just trying to find things that I want to go on tangents about today? Because, oh boy, Elizabeth Holmes just got sentenced a few days ago as I'm recording this, and she got 11 years! She got 11 years! I heard people were predicting, oh, it'd be a few months, you know, some house arrest, but she wanted, like, house arrest for, like, 18 months. She got 11 years in prison and i'm like look what she did was bad she stole money from a lot of rich people which as we all know is worse than stealing money from the poor and she got 11 years in prison which i'm like that's f-ing heavy the numbers all go to 11 oh. 11 oh, 11 and most of 11. i was thinking she'd get like three or four I feel like three or four would- She's not f***ing Bernie Madoff! Although he went for like 150 years or whatever, but that's just pointless because he's an old man and he was gonna die. But like, it does feel a bit harsh. I'm like... <laughs> and don't get me wrong, you know my opinions on Elizabeth Holmes. Don't f***ing scam people, no longer allegedly. Um, 11 years is pretty heavy though, to be honest. <laughs> Jesus. It all looks on the surface as if Twitter is chugging along as nicely or as nastily as ever. Definitely as nastily. Twitter is a cesspool. There surely can't be that much drama going on behind the scenes just because the company happens to have changed hands recently. Besides, the new owner is Elon Musk, and he's a genius. The richest man in the world must know a thing or two about business. Oh, Danny, you're not one of these. Like, I used to like Elon Musk. A lot more than I like Elon Musk now. I think some of the veneer of Elon Musk wore off because he, I felt like he used to be this guy, he's like this big visionary, he's doing the electric cars, he's like making space tra- travel cheaper, he's buying social media platforms to like encourage free speech, which I don't know, I'm not American, so I'm not like, mm, free speech. Uh, <laughs> that was a bit heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it's like, I don't know. I don't think free speech should be f-ing unlimited like so many people do because that's insane. And I don't know. I feel Teslas are a bit, they're great. Like, I'm glad that he's like bringing electric cars because I do think they're the future. But there's plenty environmentally wrong with electric cars like the battery situation, the lithium situation. And also, Teslas are a bit shit, Austin. They're, they're not bad cars. I've driven a Tesla. Um, they're just not very nice and they're priced like they're priced like a luxury car but they're just they just don't feel like you sit inside and you're like just feels a bit cheap doesn't it elon <laughs> and then you see those videos of people on youtube who like do deeper looks into it and they're like yeah they didn't paint this bit these panels don't align and they just feel a bit like a toy car rather than an actual like i've got a car that i guess would probably be about the same price as a middle of the road Tesla, like the the, the sedan one, price wise. And look, you sit in that and you're like, this is nice. Feels nice. It's comfortable. The seats are heated by ass. They even little massage my back. None of that shit in a Tesla. The seats aren't even real leather. Get it together, Tesla. Come on. You put real leather in your cars. It's not that hard. Maybe throw like, you know, I, I don't know, get the panels to match up. The richest man in the world must know a thing or two about business. He was an original member of the PayPal Mafia. He's the CEO and product architect of Tesla, the kings of the electric vehicle industry. But on it, arguably, like with their insane valuation, arguably the kings of the vehicle industry. And the founder of SpaceX, he's currently sending rockets into space with a long-term plans to colonize Mars. In comparison, how hard, and I have to say, I still love this does at SpaceX. I think that's really cool. In comparison, how hard can it be to take the reins of a simple social media company without completely screwing everything up in a matter of days? Give the man some credit. It's fair to say that just about every single step of Elon's ultimate acquisition of Twitter has been a little bumpy and involved some U-turns from all directions. As early as 2017, he responded to a jokey tweet suggesting that he should buy the platform with the words, how much is it? It turns out that the answer was around $44 billion, but it took Elon a while to reach that stage. Here is asking, it's like, asking how much something is in just that casual manner is such a like billionaire power move that I kind of 
quite like it. He originally started snapping up shares in the public company in January 2022, quickly becoming the largest shareholder with a stake of 9.2%, worth $2.89 billion. Elon's reward from Twitter, CEO Parab Agrawal was the was the offer Elon's reward from Twitter CEO Parag Agrawal was the offer that you um you had you Elon's reward from Twitter CEO Parag Agrawal was the offer of a place on the company's board of directors, a position which Elon swiftly accepted. Parag revealed his delight over Elon's new role in a tweet which read, He's both a passionate believer and intense critic of the service, which is exactly what we need on Twitter and in the boardroom. I don't know if I want, like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm fine with, you know, give me a little bit of feedback and all of that. But I don't want to have regular meetings with people who hate what I do. <laughs> They'll just be like, nah, sh- Simon. I'll be like, look, more people like it than don't, okay? <laughs> just shut up, Elon. You're tacky and I hate you. To make us stronger in the long term. No, I've got no interest in being stronger long term. I just want to have my ego stroked, okay? Jesus. Welcome, Elon. Welcome Elon indeed, but I hope Parag didn't go too overboard with the welcome nibbles and soft drinks, because in a move that would act as a forewarning of the entire drunken stumble of a journey, Elon changed his mind. By April, he had come to the conclusion that the only way for Twitter to unleash its true potential as a global platform for free speech was for Elon to launch a hostile takeover bid and transform Twitter into a private company. To this end, he offered to buy Twitter at five at $54.20 per share, which would value the company at $44 billion. It was a spectacularly generous offer which Elon himself later admitted was way too high. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dude, you, it's it's so much money. It's so much money. But maybe he was high when he came up with a figure of 54.20 per share. 54.20 get it? Ah, Elon, you're such that you're so clever. You meme so hard, Elon. <laughs> Jesus. Elon memes like his age, which I think is I think that says it all really, doesn't it? It'd be like, you know, if how old's Elon? He's a good he's he's like 50, 50 something, right? He he memes like a 50 year old. He apparently likes to include the digits 420 in his financing deals, as 420 is stoner slang for smoking weed. He threatened to do it before when he announced that he was considering taking Tesla private for four hundred and twenty dollars per share. Isn't that when he got like a fifty million dollar fine from the government? Because he was like, I'm thinking about doing this. It's like, Elon, you can't just tweet that, mate. It doesn't mean you can't. Just, no. You're going to get in trouble. How is no one checking your shit? Like, I, I have to say, like, I, I say that. But I'm cutting, I'll cut him some slack. Because that's exactly the short, sort of shit. Blah. That's exactly the sort of shit I do. And then someone will be like, dude, that is so illegal. I'll be like, what? <laughs> Nobody told me. And I have a $50 million fine. Believe it or not, jail right away. Which is nothing to him. I guess it would be like someone fi- someone finding me like 50p. So I'll be like, peasant. <laughs> Peasant SEC. So perhaps this whole Twitter acquisition was founded on little more than slightly wheezy laughter, but Twitter's board of directors weren't laughing. They initially opposed the hostile takeover and announced the adoption of a new poison pill provision. If any individual or entity acquired more than 15% of the company's shares, other shareholders would be allowed to purchase shitloads of new shares at heavily discounted prices, diluting the value of the greedy shareholder's stake and potentially pissing poison over poor Elon's chips. Yeah, so the the poison pills just like it screws up the deal so he can't acquire more without completely tanking the value of all the things that he's acquired so far it's clever corporate finance shit i know about this because i didn't know what it was and i watched a video on it it was good <laughs> Yet 10 days later, the board changed its mind. They were now happy to accept Elon's takeover bid without slyly sprinkling cyanide all over his new assets, although they did stipulate a $1 billion breakup fee if things didn't pan out. (laughs) When you buy a a house here in Czech Republic, it's, it's different to the UK. My parents are just moving house, and they, in the UK, you just, it's this, this honor system. Whereas so my parents have put an offer in on this house and they're waiting to get an offer closed on their house so they can like move to this new house. So you have this big chain, but it's all done on just honor. Like at any point, the people my parents are buying the ho- that house from could be like, nah, we, someone offered us like a bit more. So we went with them. In Czech Republic, they make you pay a, a deposit which makes a ton of sense and then it locks you in for 30 days while you're going here you get your mortgage or you sell your house or whatever and if you if you break it up you lose the deposit which is typically like a percentage it's a lot it's i don't know it's probably like 10 
It's not 10%, that's insane. It's like a big, it's like a percent or something like that. And if you break it off, then you lose that. And if they break it, if the seller breaks it off, then you get the there from them. So it, it makes a ton of sense. A billion dollars though is a lot. It's a lot more money than a little deposit on a house. Great, so now we're all good to go and everyone's happy. Nope, scrap that, Elon changed his mind. By the following month, Elon had announced that he'd put his plans on hold until Twitter could provide more evidence over their claims that over that only 5% of accounts were spam bots. Elon didn't seem entirely convinced by this estimate. And it feels, I, when this was going on, I was like, Elon doesn't want to buy Twitter. He's got buyer's remorse. And he's like, I don't want to spend $50 billion on it. Uh, something with bots. It feels like an excuse. It felt like an excuse. Oh my god. I am never gonna financially recover from this. And when Parag Agarwal attempted to explain on Twitter why he felt confident in the figures, the richest man in the world initially responded with a smelly poop emoji. Oh my god, is this Elon you like I say, just memes like a 50-year-old, doesn't he? It could be the case that Elon's concerns were genuine. He argued that this was fundamental to the health of the platform and that it was impossible to offer advertisers any real value for money if nobody's quite sure how many of Twitter's 400 million users aren't actually humans at all. Spam bots are notoriously tight-fisted and rarely dip their hands into their pockets to purchase his purchase the la latest light-up laser chopsticks. Danny, is this some reference to something that I don't get? You could have gone with, like, flamethrower. I'm sure there's a reason. But didn't he sell that flamethrower a few years ago? Which, gosh, that that's pretty f cool, to be honest. <laughs> it's not that illegal. Or maybe not, who knows? Elon doesn't give a shit. There's also the issue of regular users losing confidence in the platform if they're not entirely sure whether they're interacting and fiercely arguing with real humans or fake bots. But there's also speculation that Elon may have just had second thoughts about his rash bid and was trying to find an excuse to back out of it or at least have an opportunity to negotiate a better deal which wasn't entirely rooted in weed tropes. When Elon announced his intention to abandon the deal in July, Twitter sued him in Chancery Court in Delaware on the grounds that his termination was invalid and that his dithering and trash talking had disrupted company operations and sent the share prices tumbling in value which is like when i saw that i'm like this this seems a complete this isn't some like spurious lawsuit where they're trying to like pull something it's like this seems to genuinely have happened and it seems to be a very big problem for twitter so entirely fair i'm generally been on twitter's side throughout this whole thing even though like i don't know i've got conflicted feelings about elon musk because on the one hand, he's this crazy billionaire dude doing some cool shit, like sending pe wanting to send people to Mars. And on the other hand, he's just like a bit of a cock sometimes. It's, I don't know, it's complicated, isn't it? Just one day before the trial was due to begin in October, Elon changed his mind and completed the acquisition of Twitter for $44 billion. He covered most of the financing himself after presumably popping down to the bank to make a quick cash withdrawal. He did? I thought he, uh, I thought it was mostly, um... I thought it was mostly financed via debt, which makes a lot more sense. Because if he's like selling off his Tesla shares or SpaceX shares or whatever, that's going to damage the value of the companies because he needs to withdraw so much. And also, you're going to have to pay like capital gains on, on that, and that's going to be fucking heavy, dude. <laughs> Don't be smart, Sherlock. He also sold nearly $4 billion worth of Tesla shares, raised an extra $7 billion for investors, and secured a $13 billion debt package from a consortium of Wall Street banks. Wait, Danny, so he didn't finance it most of it himself, did he? He got $7 billion, he got $20 billion from investors and banks, and threw in what? $4 billion himself? And I don't know where the rest is coming from. But it doesn't seem like he financed most of it himself. Or unless he just had $20 billion knocking around in, like, liquid capital, which I don't think people do. I don't think people have that. I eat, like, no matter how much you're worth, you don't just have that much liquid cash because that would be an insane thing to do. You got it. You got my liquid dream. Maybe Elon just had another change of heart, or maybe his legal team had realized that he had little chance of proving in court that his concerns over spam bots constituted any material adverse, materially adverse effect on his original agreement. But all of this does lead us to the obvious question, why had he ever considered spending and borrowing such a ridiculous amount of money to buy Twitter in the first place? What exactly does he hope to achieve out of the whole thing? It's probably not money, he's already got a fair bit of that, and Twitter doesn't have a great track record when it comes to churning out a profit. Although the first thing he did was like, we need to make Twitter profitable, so I kind of disagree with you on that one, Danny, because he did that insane thing where it was like, you can get a blue check mark for $8 a month, which led to insanity. Like, that incredible thing where, what, Eli Lilly tweeted, Eli Lilly, fake, verified account, that they were making insulin free and it tanked their stock price. 
That's insane. The only thing I thought watching that, as soon as I saw that, was like, whoever tweeted that, I hope you f sold that short. And then as soon as you tweeted out it was fake, tweeted, uh, bought a ton of Eli Lilly stock because you would have made a f***ing fortune. <laughs> Is that legal? That's one of those things where I'm like, it's not insider trading. It's definitely like manipulating it somehow, but you've got nothing to do with Eli Lilly. You're not... No, you are kind of making shit about them, aren't you? But you could say it's just a joke. Is that illegal? <laughs> I don't even know. I definitely check with a lawyer before doing it, though, because it sounds like it could be, right? <laughs> oh, crap. Am I going to be upbeat? Oh, uh, so Twitter doesn't make any money. It's incurred massive losses almost every single year since it first launched in 2006, and it lost $221 million in 2021 alone. If you've had a business going for like 16 years, basically, and you're still making huge losses, what are you up to? It just seems like a bit insane, doesn't it? There's that great thing where it's like people on like what you get from each platform. And it's like, I can't remember what the meme was, but it's like TikTok, exposure, YouTube, money, Twitter, nothing except hate or whatever it was and it's like it's so true like why is twitter there why am i on twitter what do i do on twitter other than like um what recently shout about alex jones have a go at dropbox and what was the other thing i don't know most of it, I, I just i don't even know what to do on twitter i just post shit. I don't, like not even good i guess i use it to interact with fans which is kind of nice they make that's quite easy but it do, I, I don't get paid from Twitter. That'd be nice. I don't know how, how I'd get... Because they have adverts. Why can't I get a slice of that? YouTube give me a slice. So I make a living. Please, sir. I want some more. The platform also seems pretty small for in comparison to, say, Facebook. 400 million users might sound quite impressive, but it's not in the same league as the 1.5 billion users on Instagram or the 3 billion users on Facebook. That's a lot of users. Facebook's kind of shit. Maybe it's changed. I've been on there for years. I have a page because I didn't want someone to like, you know, you got to squat on your own page. So someone can't set up like Simon Whistler official or whatever. Although I'm sure they could because Facebook, no one gives a shit. But I, I, it's been, it's been a long time since I used Facebook. And only around half of those 400 million Twitter users are deemed to be active on any level. If we're to believe Elon himself, he revealed in a TED interview that his mission wasn't anything to do with making money. It was mainly about taking the internet's de facto town square and transforming it into a haven for free speech. He also isn't Facebook, they've got 3 billion users. That seems to be more of the town square. He also hopes to eliminate the spam bots which are affecting the credibility of the platform. Then he would spark a massive surge in new users, hopefully hitting almost a billion users by 2028, and dramatically cut the contribution of ads, which currently accounts for over 90% of the company's revenue, focusing instead on raking in the majority of money from new subscription revenue. No one subscribed. Twitter were like, uh, Simon. They, I don't. I think they, they, they changed their mind. They're like you could, people could subscribe right for eight bucks a month to get Twitter Blue, which gave them that the the verified checkmark. But they're also like to anyone who had a verified checkmark before, they're like, yo, Simon, you want to keep that? Sh you're gonna have to join Twitter Blue. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I just don't care that much. I'm sorry. <laughs> I it's I'm not paying you eight dollars a month for something. Also, they've entirely devalued the blue checkmark because. Now you can just get it for eight bucks a month. What's what's the point? <laughs> Stupid. You're just ruining it. You're look at my lips. You're ruining it. Ruining, ruining. However, by the time he triumphantly walked. Uh, <clears throat> However, by the time he triumphantly walked through the doors of the Twitter headquarters in San Francisco as the new owner, we'd heard little concrete detail on how exactly he was going to put any of these big plans in motion. All we'd really heard so far was that he quite fancied the idea of implanting a new edit button for tweets, and that he was considering reinstating previously banned accounts, which largely boiled down to speculation over whether he was going to allow Donald Trump back on Twitter or not. This is so stupid. Like. There's a reason. Like, Twitter's been around for a long time. You don't think they've put some thought into that edit button at some point? You don't think they've been like, no, for a reason. They're not just like, we just didn't do it. They've got 7,000 employees. It would take them like half an afternoon to put in that edit button. They've obviously decided for a reason not to. And not to mention all the bans and shit. They're there for a good reason. And I'm sorry, but like, Twitter is a private company. They don't have to like free speech your, and, and shit. If they don't want to, they don't have to. Donald Trump doesn't deserve to to have a place on a private enterprise, his platform. If that private enterprise, and I, I know Twitter's a public company, but it's not, not governmental is what I'm trying to say. It, I'm sorry if that, if that platform decides that he doesn't have a right to use that platform. That's their 
important prerogative. That's probably for a good reason. He's a bit of a bell. Bell, 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 ends. Elon appeared pretty cheerful when he made his overblown entrance through those HQ doors, announcing that the bird is free and declaring himself to be the new chief twit. It's just cringe, my dude. I'm sorry, my dude. It's cringe. It's just cringe. Just send people to Mars and sh dude. This is so much more important, Elon. Oh, we need a place to have free speech and all of that stuff. No one's other than the Nazis and a f***ing super far right or super far left are feeling like that they're having their, like, freedom stepped upon. No, like, I feel like the vast majority of people don't think that. I'm a pretty normal person. I have political opinions from all different places. Left, right, everywhere. Like, I'm a reasonable person. I look at something and I don't go like... I'm left wing or I'm right wing and therefore I don't like that because it's with the opposite party. I look at it objectively and I like that or I don't like that. It's simple. And I voted for all sorts of different parties based on my current situation and my current feelings because also as a person I evolve and I grow. So I don't know. I don't I don't, from someone who's like not politi like a super political person I just feel like I don't feel particularly like free speech oppressed and I make a ton of content that gets demonetized or suppressed or whatever and I'm like yeah fairly reasonable okay fair enough fair enough why am I going on about this rant I don't know I just uh, oh yeah I just don't feel this is that important a free speech is important to an extent um is Elon Musk buy buying Twitter as important as sending people to Mars or like working on electric cars no it's fucking stupid stop it go use your giant brain which i do believe you have on uh, on more important shit. like the future of humanity and not us all burning dinosaurs to drive around come on let's go elon focus on the big shit, not this stupid twitter thing it's a distraction i thought this was america huh isn't this america i'm sorry i thought this was america he may have been armed with a white porcelain sink purely for the sake of a let that sink in tweet, but he almost looked like a man with a plan. And he didn't waste much time getting his hands dirty. He immediately dissolved the board and fired three top executives, including CEO Parag Agrawal. Welcome, Elon. <laughs> it was initially believed that this opening move alone had cost Elon around $78 million in golden parachute packages, which should have been heading in the direction of the fired executives, but it's reported that Elon is hoping to get around this by declaring that they were dismissed for mismanaging the company. After installing his own team, either way, either way, they're getting a huge f***ing settlement. Like, maybe they won't get... Wasn't that Parag guy going to get, like, 50 mil? Look, and maybe Elon will fuss around and he won't get 50 mil, but he's still getting more money Money than he will ever f***ing need. You can bet your ass, in my opinion. After installing his own team of specialists into the new war room, many of them pulled from Tesla, Elon and his new buddies moved on to the next phase of the plan, cutting the workforce of 7,500 employees in half. This was actually a step back from Elon's original plan of slashing the workforce by 75%, but he was clearly baring his teeth the minute he put down that silly porcelain sink. Elon had swiftly announced that working from home was banned on the grounds that they were all probably slacking off and watching Yogi Bear cartoons instead of putting in the hours. Fair. <laughs> He followed this up with a warning that working for Twitter was about to become properly intense and that you should wave goodbye to your normal personal life if you were keen on making it to the next payday. And this is the thing. Like, if I'd worked at Twitter for a long time and had my family in, like, I work way less hard than I used to work. Like, my first few years of, like, making, even though I make more stuff now, my first few years on YouTube, when I was like, I'm just going to work really hard for a while because, I don't know, any successful person that I ever met... They weren't, uh, it wasn't like, how'd you get successful? They were like, oh, I came up with this invention, or I won the lottery, or I did this, or I did that. And you're like, wow, oh my God. It's always like I worked really, really hard for a really long time, and then I became successful. And I just met too many of those people, and then I was like, okay, <laughs> I used to be lazy. And I was like, no more, no more. And I started working really hard. And now I work less hard because I got family, because I got friends, I go on holiday, I leave work early sometimes. It's just nice. I'm taking it a bit easier. And if someone was come along and was like, Simon, you got to work much harder now, I'd be like, no, I don't want to do that. And uh, I'm pretty sure if I worked at Twitter or even me now, I'd just find a job somewhere else where I'm going to get paid a lot of money as well because I work at Twitter, I'm skilled, uh, and I'm not going to work for the guy who's just wanted me to work crazy hard and not give me any more benefits and he's maybe driving my company into the ground i don't think that's going to work out very well to be honest <laughs> those who are able to go hardcore and play to win twitter is a good place and those who are not totally understand but then twitter is not for you also 
I'm, you, you, he's essentially firing you. So you're going to get some money. Shortly afterwards, Twitter employees received an email which essentially told them that they may or may not be fired by the end of the week. In the meantime, anyone who was still working in the office whilst reading the email should return home and immediate, immediately, as all badge access had been temporarily suspended. Didn't he just say you had to work from the office? And I was like, no, you have to go home. Elon, it's confusing. How about this? You're fired. You copy that? You're fired. You're hired. You're fired. Just as promised, by the end of the week, thousands of Twitter employees received a pretty blunt email which revealed that today is your last day working for the company. Some of them had already figured that out for themselves when they had earlier discovered that they were locked out of their Twitter systems and work applications. I get the feeling there's going to be, once all this is shaken up right, there's going to be some pretty f- huge like leaked data from Twitter, right? Because you're upsetting, and obviously that's illegal. No one should do that. It's bad. But you're essentially firing or getting rid of or making unpleasant thousands of people's jobs who I'm sure have access to all sorts of critical infrastructure, private emails, private documents, all of this stuff that I'm sure that Twitter doesn't want to be to see released. And I mean, look, these are tech guys. They're going to know how to release that information anonymously. I just get the feeling in the next, it's going to be a while. Things are going to cool off. Things are, people are going to work this out. They're going to like write to the right journalists or whatever. And so interesting it's going to come out for sure because Twitter's a huge company. Elon's defense was simple, then some might suggest perfectly reasonable. Unfortunately, there is no choice when the company is losing $4 million a day. However, it was a bit of a bungled mass sacking. In a rather embarrassing move, dozens of the employees were later asked if they wouldn't mind coming back to the company either because they'd been fired by mistake or because it had become apparent that they actually fulfilled a pretty important role within the company. Fire first, ask questions later. Can't go wrong with that. Twitter HQ was rapidly becoming a much quieter work environment, helped along by the fact that another wave of senior staff had found themselves heading for the exit, although it's not clear who may have jumped and who may have been discreetly pushed. The latest raft of departures included the Chief Marketing Officer, Head of Product, Vice President of Global Sales, and Chief Customer Officer, the Chief People and Diversity Officer, and Sweaty Frank the Elevator Designer. Still, still, now that all that dead wood was cut away, Elon could focus on getting a proper bit of work done and implementing some of his cunning new strategies. One of the first major changes to get rolled out was in relation to the blue tick verification process. In the past, the coveted blue tick served exclusively as an official verification of an account belonging to a genuine celebrity or prominent figure. Yes! That's me. Genuine celebrity. <laughs> prominent figure. I still don't see myself as really either of those things, even if Twitter tells me that I am. Like a legend. In other words, it's the tick that you look out for if you want to track down the famous Simon Whistler on Twitter, rather than the other Simon Whistlers who all work at, who all work as road sweepers in Tooting Beck. There is another Simon Whistler who works for like he's some sort of financial analyst, and occasionally like my Google alerts will come up, and it'll be like you wrote Simon Whistler's latest um, financial analysis, and I'm like, oh god, what what's my what financial analysis? And they're like, oh no, it's the other dude. <laughs> It's yeah, and there's also some Viola player. There's another Vi, but I think he's that's like historic, historic Viola player. Because I'll get like you know, his Simon Whistler's Viola music has come up for sale on eBay or whatever, and I'm like, I should buy that. I think I did. I think I might have one of those. Did I actually buy that? Some point, I have a vague memory of buying one of Simon Whistler's Viola CDs. <laughs> okay, smartass. Let's see what this mystery's all about. <laughs> More importantly, the blue tick certifies that this is the real Simon Whistler and not just someone impersonating him, ranting about Alex Jones, YouTube creator, and Dropbox. <laughs> Only with the real SW. But Elon didn't like this system. In his own tweeted words, Twitter's current lords and peasants system, for those who don't. For, the, for who has or doesn't have a blue check... Elon, could you proofread your tweets before publishing them? Jesus Christ. For who has or doesn't have a blue check mark is, mark is bullshit. Power to the people. Blue for $8 a month. But it's not a lord and peasant system. I don't get any benefits from being a Twitter lord. I mean, I get... I don't, I don't think there are any benefits to this. It's just a system so that people don't impersonate me. Or whatever. <laughs> power to the people 
Twitter Blue was designed to weed out the imposters and the bots and the trolls attempting to manipulate public opinion and get real people to gain verification with a paid for subscription, which would officially authenticate your human existence and help you get priority in replies, mentions, and searches, as well as reducing the number of adverts thrown in your face and several other cool perks. It was also meant to be the first stepping stone to everyone getting used to the idea that you're going to have to pay for Twitter in the future if you want to avoid being relegated to the deserted black backwaters of the platform. Um, I'm not paying for that. Sh Sorry to break it to you. I'm just not going to do that. Horror author Stephen King wasn't particularly taken with the concept, of it, particularly when it was first mooted, that it would cost twenty dollars a month. Stephen King still has a concept of this. Like, is there a different? Like, it's eight dollars or twenty dollars a month. You're Stephen fucking King. You have a lot of money, mate. Do you really lo like? I don't know. I just feel like at that point, aren't you out of touch with like the difference between eight dollars and twenty dollars? Really? Twenty dollars a month to keep my check mark? Fuck that. They should pay me. If that gets instituted, I'm gone like Enron. Does he mean I'm gone like Enron? Okay. Deep pull. And Twitter should pay him because, like, this is the thing. People aren't on Twitter to use Twitter. They're on Twitter to follow people like Stephen King and Simon Whistler. Yeah, he's got a fucking point, doesn't he? Elon personally responded with, how about $8 a month? We need to pay the bills somehow. That is not Stephen King's problem. That is some stupid ass... I, I, that is, like, so... Elon Musk is an incredible businessman. That is the dumbest business take that I have ever heard. It's like, Elon, um, you paying the bills is not the customer's problem. You making a product that the customer want to pay you for is your problem. Fix it. You can't just be like, pay me because I have, I need to pay. It'd be like, you guys, I'm not going to make any videos anymore. I just need you to send me money via PayPal so I can afford to rent things and own things and live my life and eat. No one's doing that! <laughs> Unfortunately, the rolling out of Twitter Blue was hurried, ill-considered, and ran about as smoothly as a tea trolley on a cobbled street. The option to upgrade to Twitter Blue was initially offered exclusively on iOS devices, whilst prominent figures with existing blue ticks were given a secondary grey tick to indicate that they were official celebrities rather than upgraded regular accounts. Wait, I don't think I have that. Do they, do they do that to like all the original blue? I don't know, this is so confusing. Oh, which kind of worked against Elon's whole lords and peasants argument. Just hours later, Elon changed his mind and dropped the secondary grey ticks before changing his mind and restoring them the next day, and then changing his mind about the whole thing and putting Twitter Blue on hold indefinitely. Yes! 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 No! 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 Fuck! Shit! Part of the problem was that Twitter suddenly became flooded with new paid blue accounts, which impersonated public figures, including a bunch of new Elon Musk accounts, a fake Pepsi account, which suggested that Coca-Cola tastes better, and a fake George W. Bush account, which laments its I miss killing Iraqis. Fucking hell. Elon's response was to declare all per impersonation accounts will be suspended unless clearly marked as parody and pulled the plug on the first major implementation of a new policy. But the bigger question on everybody's lips was how exactly Elon was going to bring back free speech to Twitter and whether he had any plans to lift the ban on frozen accounts, including ones belonging to a certain real Donald Trump. Musk had previously indicated that he considered the permanent ban on Trump to be foolish in the extreme, morally wrong, and flat out stupid, and had suggested that anyone suspected suspended for minor and dubious reasons, will be freed from Twitter jail. Upon Elon's takeover of the company, Trump himself had observed that he was very happy that Twitter is now in sane hands. But whilst Elon has always suggested that permanent bans are dangerous and can polarize free speech, the wider picture understandably raises concerns from some quarters that an uncensored free-for-all could lead to a rise in targeted abuse, harassment, hate speech, and the spread of disinformation and conspiracy theories across the internet. This is the thing. I, I don't think there are that many free speech absolutists because obviously there's a point where it's just um or maybe that's just me i feel like there's a point where free speech crosses a line and i'm like that's not okay anymore i don't think you should be able to say that um yeah maybe that's just me maybe that is just me maybe there are more i guess it's like an american thing like people love their free speech i just think you shouldn't be able to like racially harass someone or threaten to kill people or or do that kind of stuff um because i think it's i think it's bad <laughs> sorry <laughs> not sorry Elon himself knows the few things about that shortly after taking the reins of twitter he posted an now deleted unfounded conspiracy theory related to the vicious attack on the husband of representative speaker 
Nancy Pelosi? And what exactly would he be allowed to get away with in this proposed new era of free speech? Would he be allowed to post racist opinions? Would he be allowed to post graphic and disturbing pictures? Would he be allowed to incite the storming of the US Capitol because he didn't win a presidential election? Elon initially promised that he wouldn't be making any drastic changes to content policy until he has formed a new content moderation council within the next few weeks. That sounds reasonably sensible. Good for Elon. No, wait, scrap that, he changed his mind again. Just as I was nearing the end of the first draft of the script, it was announced that Trump's account had been reactivated after Elon ran a fun little poll on Twitter which asked people if they thought the former president should be allowed to pay, should be allowed back to play. Over 15 million users responded, and the results were incredibly tight, with 51.8% ultimately making the decision that Trump's ban should be lifted. Trump has always insisted that he doesn't even have any interest in returning to the platform, as he's perfectly happy broadcasting to his much smaller audience on his own failing social media platform truth social allegedly but his immediate response to elon's poll was typically contradictory he urged his followers to vote now with positivity but don't worry we aren't going anywhere truth social is special why would he be encouraging his voters to vote on the poll if he had no interest in making a return to twitter i'd bet my last pickled egg that he'll be back on twitter within a matter of days the president of the naacp derek johnson was not impressed by this latest development though he stated any advertiser still funding twitter should immediately pause all advertising if elon musk continues to run twitter like this using garbage polls that do not represent the american people and the needs of our democracy god help us all ah the advertisers some of them have grown a little nervous over twitter's new proposed direction and elon has made no secret of the fact that he has little time for what he perceives to be irrelevant and shallow marketing he once tweeted in 2019 tesla does not advertise or pay for endorsements instead we just use that money to make the products great but this is a bit of a problem when the advertisers on twitter are currently responsible for 90 percent of the company's revenue Maybe that's how you could pay those bills, Elon, rather than being like Stephen King has to pay, even though he is the reason that I'm sure millions of people are on the platform. And some of the biggest spenders have now paused their Twitter marketing over concerns that their cheery ad might just end up positioned next to a tweet that suggests that Adolf Hitler had the right kind of idea. It didn't inspire much confidence when, in the immediate aftermath of Elon's takeover, Twitter became the target of a coordinated attack via the medium of hate speech. Just 12 hours after the platform acquisition, the platform witnessed a 5 100% spike in the use of appalling racial slurs along with a barrage of pro-Nazi and anti-LGBT tweets. I I see I I see good things about Hitler also. You what? Some of the names reported to have put the brakes on the Twitter marketing include General Motors, Audi, Pfizer and General Mills. That's okay, those are small companies. They probably aren't spending that much money on Twitter, <laughs> right? I mean, to to be honest, my Twitter ads are just full of crypto scams, which seems dodgy. <laughs> like that's not okay. Not that YouTube's not full of crypto scams, but can we just stop with the f***ing crypto scams, everybody? What the f***, man? Scam, 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 it's a scam. And this hasn't made Elon very happy. He's angrily tweeted, Twitter has had a massive drop in revenue due to activist groups pressuring advertisers. They're not pressuring advertisers, Elon. You f***. Up. Even though nothing has changed with content moderation and we did everything we could to appease the activists. Extremely messed up, they're trying to destroy free speech in America. He later threatened to deploy a thermonuclear name and shame if this continues, but during more considered moments, Elon has attempted to allay any fears about what he considers to be free speech. He insists that Twitter will not become a hotbed of hate speech or a free-for-all hellscape with no consequences. He recently clarified that he wants to promote free speech, which matches the law, but that he feels going beyond that law is contrary to the will of the people. But the eyes of the world will be watching very carefully. Thierry Breton, the European Commissioner for Internal Market, has been very clear to spell out that the bird will fly by our rules. Yeah, this is the thing. If you operate in, like, lots of countries, it's like, yeah, America might be like, yeah, ha, free speech for all! But Europe's like, bro, you can't just have people posting racist shit. Especially Hitler. If you, if, if they're in our, you know, if you're operating in XYZ European country, we're just not okay with that, and we'll fine you if you don't enforce the rules that are not rules, they're f***ing laws. Maybe getting rid of a few more staff might cheer Elon up after losing all of that advertising revenue. On November the 16th, he ramped up the pressure even more on employees when he announced that remaining staff were required to commit to his extremely hardcore vision for Twitter. Employees were warned that they would be working long hours at high intensity and that only exceptional performance was acceptable. They were effectively given an ultimatum via a Google form. If they responded yes by the next day, they would be allowed to continue working around the clock on the new hardcore Twitter 2.0. Otherwise, they should consider that their last day working for Twitter in response literally hundreds
hundreds more Twitter staff flee the nest in a mass exodus. As one disgruntled guy put it, I didn't want to work for someone who threatened us over email multiple times when I was already working 60 to 70 hours a week. Elon initially seemed unfazed by the criticism, declaring, the best people are staying, so I'm not super worried. No, the best people will leave because they're very confident in their ability to find a job but I don't know, f***ing Facebook, where they'll make just as much money and probably be happier. But it later transpired that perhaps more people left than Elon was anticipating, and now entire teams and chains of command had departed the building, leading to another embarrassing situation in which many of them were politely called back and asked to reconsider. One of the biggest concerns is that many more will follow the herd out of the building after they've had more time to weigh up such a big life decision. Interestingly, around this time, Musk did appear to soften his stance on working from home, firing off an email which announced that remote working is perfectly acceptable if your manager is happy to take responsibility for ensuring that you're making an excellent contribution. But just in case you are worried he might be going soft, he followed this up with, at risk of stating the obvious, any manager who falsely claims that someone reporting to them is doing excellent work will be exited from the company. So on the face of it, things haven't been running entirely smoothly since the takeover. Although the crusader of free speech was meant to be on a mission to eliminate the bots, he so far appears to have made a better job of eliminating the advertising revenue, crucial employees and human users who are reportedly seeking out alternative social media platforms in the wake of Elon's mess. Now run by a skeleton group, some experts have warned that Twitter might very well break as soon as it hits the next technical glitch, as there'll be nobody in the building who can fix it. And whilst Elon Musk may well be a business Business genius. It could be argued that his particular skill set and maverick leadership style was never a good fit for Twitter. He's not in charge of Twitter because he's the best person for the job. He's in charge of Twitter because he's the richest person in the world. And so far, his strategy of making random decisions on the fly and then reversing them using bully boy tactics on staff and then pissing off the advertisers doesn't appear to be getting him very far. The advertising thing is important because it's not really something that Elon has ever had to deal with before. Although he plans to pull more revenue from subscriptions in the future, he needs to try and appease the advertisers in the meantime. Instead, he seems to be driving them away as they begin to lose confidence in the chaotic platform, and he's already plunging a financially troubled company into a deep catastrophe. Got you! Got you! Dead. It's also been suggested that he really needs to think harder about his approach to free speech. Although the formation of a content moderation council sounded promising, it currently sounds like he's running a one-man council. Shortly after Trump's account was restored, Elon was asked if Alex Jones might be allowed back on the platform, and the response was a curt no. That sounds good to me, but on the very same day, I noticed that Kanye West's account had been reactivated just weeks after his ban for coming out with a strange barrage of anti-Semitic crap and unfounded conspiracy theories. So, well, how are these decisions being made? Is it just the richest man in the world who gets to control who is allowed into the conversation? There are a number of ways this could go. I don't think that Elon Musk is capable of burning Twitter to the grounds, and I feel that rumors of the platform's impending demise are premature. Maybe he'll turn things around after a bumpy start and achieve his long-term dream of turning Twitter into the everything app. I think it's more likely that he'll vacate his post as chief twit in one way or another and leave twitter in the hands of people who are better equipped to deal with the unique challenges posed by the platform i think that's unquestionably what will happen he'll realize he doesn't want to be doing this and he'll hire like a solid executive from another social media company to be the ceo they'll fill the board and twitter will continue on as before after a brief spat of craziness still owned by elon musk and it'll probably lose him a ton of money in the short term and maybe it'll make him some money in the long term as the company maybe goes public again in the future or something like that. I don't know. That's probably how it'll play out. There's an interesting conspiracy theory that Elon was never interested in Twitter in the first place. He just wanted to offload a massive stack of Tesla shares without creating panic from investors and buying Twitter was the best way of doing it. But Elon wouldn't want us to give too much oxygen to silly conspiracy theories. Although it apparently depends on who's saying them and whether he agrees with them or not. One of his own most recent tweets at the time of writing this script was simply, Twitter is alive. Let's hope that tweet is not tragically outdated by the time this video lands on YouTube. In fact, let's hope Elon Musk doesn't own Google by the time this video lands on YouTube. Stranger things have happened. Oh god, don't say that. Please don't say that. That would be so scary. <laughs> don't know. Uh, thank you for watching. $50 billion on it. Uh, something with bots. It feels like an excuse. It felt like an excuse. Oh my god. I am never going to financially recover from this.